Hey, Andrew McLaren here. Today we're going to be going over labeling all these different vocab words like atoms, molecules, compounds, ions, and substances um, for a drawing of a chemical. The reason that I'm doing this is that it's very difficult to get naming down with chemicals without understanding what these words are. Like if you're trying to name a certain type of chemical, it's also very, very difficult to work with like balancing reaction problems without being able to talk about these specifically and accurately. So we're going to go over this by modeling out atoms versus molecules, just talking about in general what you're gonna see with these things. We're gonna go over subscripts, coefficients, and also parentheses, um, just what those mean in chemistry. And then we're going to draw out some simple molecules. Um, I wanna talk about the difference between ionic and covalent basically covalent are actual compounds <laughs> and then do some practice problems. Um, and so by the end of this, you should be able to identify all those vocab words, draw out a chemical from its formula, or if you see a chemical, be able to write out its formula. It's more important to be able to write out a formula from a drawing. Sometimes making the drawings can be kind of tricky, but the overall concept here is, is very important although those situations can be less important. <laughs> so we're gonna start by labeling what we can in these models. I just like to start here because oftentimes you see circles and people think like, oh, I know what I'm looking at, but we gotta make sure that we do. So label what you can of atoms, molecules, compounds, ions, and substances, uh, maybe on some paper for these diagrams. Very, very useful just to do a little self-check. So this whole thing, it has to be an atom. And the thing that really gives it away for me is that there's these orbitals going around the center cluster. And they're not labeled, but these look like protons and neutrons here. And we've got some electrons around the outside. And so this is definitely an atom. And if it's charged, like if it had an different amount of electrons from the uh, protons, then it might, it might be that ion. Same thing here, this, the orbits tell me immediately that I'm looking at an atom. I can't really label anything for these two for molecules because I'm just looking at a single atom um, or substance or anything like that. It's kind of hard to label for these first two. But this next one you can label quite a bit. So if we look at this, sorry, I just wanna look at what colors I'm using for things. Atoms is green, okay. So if we look at this, we can say that we have some hydrogen atoms. So there's one hydrogen atom here, right there. And there's also a hydrogen atom there. So there's hydrogen atoms, there's, so we can say two hydrogen atoms right there. And then we can also point out there's one oxygen atom. This whole thing, this is just one molecule of uh, H2O. So we have one molecule here and this is also what we would call a compound. H2O is a compound. So you can think of this as like, you could have two water molecules, like you could have H2O and another H2O next to it. So you've got two of those water molecules. Um, so you can have multiple molecules. I've only drawn one right here and H2O is a compound, um, and the substance is um, is H2O, and I don't believe we have any ions present in this, this drawing. So yeah, there's quite a bit of information here. The substance is H2O. You can have multiple molecules. In this case, we only have one. And this is what we would call a compound because a compound has two different atoms in it. You can see that there's 
the hydrogen and the oxygen in there. So I'm just going to put um, hydrogen and oxygen next to that to keep note of why that is a compound. So that's, you can imagine quite a bit of information going on there. If you look at like sodium and chlorine, if you look at those on a periodic table, um, like sodium and, and chlorine, those things, they tend to be ions there on the part of the periodic table where this wants to lose an electron, become plus one. And this wants to uh, gain an electron, becoming minus one. And so oftentimes things are kind of drawn like this where you've got the atom and its charge right here. So this is the atom. And then we also have uh, the charge. And you see that oftentimes with these ions. So just keep that in mind that ions are charged particles. We typically don't show all the electrons, protons, and neutrons with them. Instead, we just give you the, uh, the note of what charge it's currently at. And then if we look at this guy right here, this is kind of interesting. So we've got our two hydrogen atoms. I'm just going to write H atoms. So there's two hydrogen atoms. Again, we have one molecule. of um, H2, this is also known as hydrogen gas. This is not a compound. Um, you can think about that as because it's only H. And then um, this is still a substance. All chemicals you can call substances, like all things are made of some substance but it might be made of just one thing, like one element, in this case, like the hydrogen gas, that would not be considered a compound. Um, but something that has slightly different elements in it, like hydrogen and oxygen, that would be considered a compound. Co meaning together, and it's like, like cooperative, right? It's things coming together and working together in a sense. So substance, um, and that, we could say the substance is H2. That's one way that we typically refer to these things. And there's something that I'm forgetting here. This is not, not an ion. Okay, so that is the main idea in modeling out these, um, these words with atoms and molecules and just kind of referring to that. Just keep in mind, if you're seeing something with orbitals, that's not going to be um, like a molecule. It's going to be the zoomed in version of an atom. So there's some really interesting mistakes that happen when people are thinking about chemicals and they're working with the formulas. And it has to do with differences between how we use some symbols in math and how we use them in chemistry. Um, when we're talking about coefficients, you've probably seen this in math where you have like 2x or 2 times x or 2 times x plus y or 2xy. In those situations, um, the coefficient is all 2. And you can think about that in terms of chemistry. Like here we've got 2BrCl. That's basically saying that you've got this bromine right here and this chlorine. And there's, those are together in a molecule. And you've got two of those molecules. So it's a, like saying when you have like 2x, it's like saying that you have two of whatever this, this formula is. Be careful though, because this isn't two times Br times Cl. Um, this is more uh, like two parentheses Br plus Cl. Like we've got two of this set. And uh, why I'm showing it that way is that we've you can also think about this as being one molecule, but we've got two sets of those molecules. And so the bromine and the chlorine, they're literally bound to each other in a molecule here. And you've got two sets of that, of bromine and chlorine being bound to each other. So just keep that in mind that when you have the two in front, it's basically saying this whatever is behind this number is one molecule um, or possibly a compound. Maybe it's not a compound. Maybe it's like H2. So that can't be called a compound, but it could be called a substance still, right? 
See what I mean? Words are tricky with this stuff. Also, uh, keep in mind these subscripts. Typically in math, a subscript is used to like label something. I use it all the time to label vari variables. Like I'll do like force of the box or force of gravity and have that be a little subscript. In chemistry, it's a way of showing the number of atoms in a molecule, okay? So it, it shows here that there's two oxygens in one molecule. Like there's only, in this case, there's only one of these things, hence there being only one right there. Um, if I'm doing my color coordination, I guess this should be red to show that there's only one molecule. So in one of these molecules, there's two of the these oxygens. And that's pretty easy when it's just like a simple molecule, um, like CO2 or H2O or something like that. You can kind of see that in your head. Um, this is kind of weird, though, when we have polyatomic ions, because you're basically saying this whole thing right here, there's two of them, right? So there's two right there. You can see this is the CO3. And so I've got two sets of CO3, but within that, there's three oxygens. So I've got like three oxygens, this whole thing, there's two of those. And um, you can see two of the CO3s here and you can see three of the irons there. So these subscripts are written here to uh, show the number of atoms in a molecule, or it's kind of weird with ions, but it's like the lowest ratio between these things. Like there's two of these for every three of these things. Yeah. I think that that's the main idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. While we're going through these drawings, I want you thinking about the big picture, not worrying too much about the details, because some chemicals can be difficult to draw. Um, but you should just be thinking about this big picture, okay? So if we look ahead at this diagram, you can see that I've got two NO2 and one O2. So I've labeled a whole lot here. You can see all of the oxygen atoms are labeled, and the nitrogen atoms are also labeled. Um, it looks like I've pointed out that NO2 is a compound. So this is one compound, but we have two molecules of that compound. Okay, so we've got two molecules and we only have one molecule of O2. This would not be considered a compound because oxygen bound to itself, that's the same element. Compounds need to be slightly different elements there involved. So, Although this is not a compound, it is what we would, would consider a substance. All chemicals are substances. So this is still a substance. And I don't see any ions present here as well. Yeah, so if we are thinking about drawing out a chemical formula, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Typically, a, uh, a substance will have slightly different charges in it. So if you have ionic things, there'll be completely different charges like plus and minus. Um, if it's carbon dioxide, the oxygen wants the electrons more, so it'll be slightly negative charged, and the carbon will have a slightly positive charge. And so they'll interact and form bonds. Um, ions, it's not really a, a bond, but it's very similar to a bond. Um, but long story short, there's gonna be a slight difference in charge and typically the positive goes in the center, like uh, with CH4, if we looked at that compound, there's going to be four uh, hydrogens going off of the carbon right here. And then if you imagine like H2O, like oxygen's in the center and you've got two hydrogens coming off of it. The main thing is that there's, you don't want to have positive next to another positive, kind of like magnets. They, they kind of repel each other. So let's go ahead and actually try and write out a formula and think about this, okay? So if we had not one of these, but let's say, let's say we had three of these right here, let's label out our, our parts here. We've got um, some oxygen atoms 
and we've got some hydrogen atoms. It looks like we have uh, three molecules of H2O. Um, H2O is a compound because hydrogen and oxygen are different elements. So that's okay. And H2O is a substance. And there's no ions right now that we've written out. So yeah, that's the main idea. And if you were to write this out in terms of formula, this might look like H2O. Oh, and three showing that number of molecules, two showing the number of um, atoms. It's a subscript. That's the that's the idea here that I'm trying to get across. Now, if we had um, a slightly different problem, let's say we've got uh, these different hydrogens. These are hydrogen atoms here. It looks like we've got uh, chlorine atoms. And um, what's BA again? I've, I've forgotten which one is BA. Barium. So we've got barium. And it looks like we've got, like, in this situation, two barium atoms and uh, four chlorine atoms and two hydrogen atoms. But it looks like we have... Um, one molecule of H2, and we have two molecules of the chemical BACL2. Or that's how you would write the formula. I'm saying all of these the incorrect way, I know, <laughs> but it's easier to just focus on other parts of the problem right now. So this is a compound. Yay. Cl2 is compound. Or is a compound, I should say. It's a compound. And then not a compound. All right. H2 is not a compound. Um, and I don't think in either case we have any ions. And then, no ions. At least with how we've written out these problems, there's no ions. So, yeah, we've got our atoms, molecules, compounds, ions, substance. These are both substances. Both of these would be called substances. So we've got the hydrogen and the BACL2. And so if I wanted to write that out, I could write out that formula in this situation as um, H2 plus BACL2. And I have two of these that are reacting with just one of those. And so we've got this, from these um, chemicals, we can write out a little, little formula for them. And then let's do another couple of ones like this. So we've got our different atoms. We've got like our carbon atom. It looks like we've got a fluorine atom and a chlorine atom. And it looks like we've got three of the carbon atoms and one, two, three, four, five, six, six fluorine, and I believe six chlorine as well. Um, you can see we've got three molecules. And it's all of the same chemical. I believe that this is written like that. I, I can't remember which one would go in front between these two. There's a rule, but <laughs> it's not not the main focus of this. And so this is a compound. 
is compound and it also is a substance. Um, we're not seeing any ions here though right now. So no ions. Yeah, and that, that's all of those different parts. We've got the three molecules, the molecules showing the number of bundles of these atoms we have, and then the um, subscripts telling us the number of atoms within one bundle or molecule of this, of this substance. All right, um, got a few more that I wanted to do like this. So if we have this chemical, uh, this is methane, CH4, and oxygen gas. If we react to that, you can see that we've got like hydrogen atoms, we've got carbon atoms, and we've got oxygen atoms. And you can see that we have um, three molecules here, because there's three bundles of these things. Three molecules of the CH4, and then uh, two molecules of the O2. And then um, I'm just going to honestly just copy paste because in this case this is a compound this is not a compound Oop. let's change it over to purple and then in both cases here neither of these are ions no ion and no ion and so if I wanted to write out that formula, we actually already have the formula written here. Um, the numbers in front, the coefficients tell you the number of molecules that are involved. The subscripts tell you how many elements are in these individual um, molecules for these substances. You got to be careful with how you use these words, man. <laughs> if you're ever curious about what a chemical actually looks like, you can actually do that with this interactive periodic table. Um, it's just ptable.com. It's if you Google interactive periodic table, it comes up. I'll try and link it as well. It's a really, really neat tool. Um, you can just, for example, if you have hydrogen and carbon, it will give you a list of a lot of things that are pretty common to it, like methane right there. And it'll show you what the, uh, the chemical even looks like. So, Kind of, kind of a cool, cool little tool that helps you with figuring out how to arrange atoms if you're not sure. So yeah, I think that that's the the main idea that I wanted to get through with how to draw these things out. Is there's a um, a way of looking at all these words visually, and it relates directly to these formulas that we draw out. And I'm trying to help you relate between those two. So if we're trying to think about the um, the subscripts here, I have told you that subscripts tell you the number of uh, that atom in a molecule. That only really works for covalent compounds. Like with covalent compounds like carbon dioxide um, or let's say like, uh, like H2O or something like that or um, CH4, all of these things they actually are bound to each other and they are traveling around in these little packets that are molecules like there's these hydrogens that are always bound to the oxygen and with this methane this carbon has four hyd hydrogens that are bound to it and they always are traveling around together as a little packet right but with covalent compound or with ionic what you can do is you can kind of think about this as just completely separate things like this is one of these and one of these and they're floating around as like a plus and a minus charge so it's totally okay to think about them like that way but it gets kind of weird because if you start looking at this you're basically saying i have one of these as plus two charge 
and I have two of these. So when we're talking about subscripts, but we're talking about an ionic compound, it's not really telling you how many of them are in a packet together, but it's more telling you what's the uh, smallest ratio that you can talk about these um, elements. And you can say that there's two of these for every one of those, and we know that for sure. In reality, there's probably like millions of these things floating around in a solution of water, but there's going to be, if this was one million, there's gonna be two million of these if you have that compound that you've dissolved in there. So although it's not a neat packet or molecule, um, it works out for keeping track of like the amount of elements that are present. So we were able to write them out that way, especially very useful for like balancing out reactions and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind that although these are, this is, uh, not really a uh, molecule. Keep that in mind though, because you can talk about having like, um, like a concentration. You could talk about having like one mole, like, or 12 molar, HCl, and that's going to have a mole of HCl, and that's like a whole lot of hydrogens and a whole lot of chlorines. And so, whereas we don't have a molecule of HCl, we can talk about the number of the chlorines and hydrogens that you would have, and then if you have a certain concentration, you can also talk about that as well. Also keep in mind that polyatomic ions, this can make math complicated with these things, but if you had a um, calcium and nitrate here, if you had some sort of chemical that was written out like that, and maybe that was in solution, what it's telling you is that there's one calcium for every nitrate there is. And so you can think about this kind of like this being one um, like molecule where it's not really a molecule, but you can also think of it like like a molecule um, for covalent for keeping track of the amount of atoms and whatnot. Same thing here. If I had two ammonias and one carbonate here, you've got one of these here, and you got two of these here. You also notice that the charges cancel out um, in ionic compounds. If we have them really balanced out, it should be canceled out, right? So that's essentially what you're looking at with your polyatomic ions. And um, this is a good pract practical example of, this is supposed to be a one, by the way. This is a good practical example of when we have some ionic compound written in here. Like there's this thing right here, which is ionic. And then we also have like these other things which are all covalent right here, like this oxygen and the water and the chlorine are all covalent. So you will oftentimes be told to work with the uh, ionic and covalent compounds together in formulas. And it's kind of interesting. And it works out totally fine. Just give me a second. I'm going to try and see if I can get one note to be faster. So if we look at this reaction, what we basically are saying is that we have a bunch of hydrogens that are in solution and they're gonna be interacting with some chlorines that are also in solution. And there's going to be quite a bit of them. There's gonna be about four of them each for every oxygen gas that we have present. So we also have O attached to another O, and this is reacting, and we should be able to form um, some H2Os, right? So we've got our hydrogens, got our oxygens, we've got our hydrogens. So this actually is a compound, so they are bound to each other, and we're also going to have some chlorines there bound to themselves. So I believe we have two of these um, right there and two of those right there. So in this case, 
you can see that although these aren't like strictly a, a, a chemical that's bound to each other, we have accounted for like four times as many of them as of this. So we can write them out kind of like they were bound to each other or in a bond. It's, it's okay. In any case, you can say that we have um, all these different atoms. We've got like H atoms. We've got our chlorine atoms as well. Actually, these are ions. So why don't I label my hydrogen atoms over here? Right? Oh, nope. Leave that. I just want that. We've got our hydrogen atoms. We've got our chlorine as well. We've got our um, oxygen atoms. And we have some molecules here. You can think of we have one molecule of O2 that's reacting. Um, we have two molecules of the H2O, and we have two molecules of the chlorine gas. The Cl2. And then this is like four, and I would call these like, they're similar to molecules of HCl. It's more of like the lowest ratio or smallest ratio. When we're talking about the ionic compounds, um, sorry if I just hit that and that was loud. <laughs> this is definitely though a compound. We do have two different chemicals that are is compound. Um, and this is not a compound, the O2, but the other ones are. And I need to put is not compound. Here we go. For that O2, because the O2 is not really a comp compound because it's all the same thing. And I believe that this is actually also not a compound because the chlorine is attached to another chlorine. So it's the same sort of thing. Um, all of these are substances. We do have some ions in this problem. So let's go ahead and label those ions. And um, I'm just going to be lazy and take from the substance label on the other slide because all of these should be substances. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's the main idea. And you can see right here that it's okay to keep track of ions and even to think of them like molecules. I believe that I actually wrote this one out like it was a molecule, um, but BACL actually with... Um, Actually, no, it, it, I can't remember. Does BACL actually form a real compound or is it? It's one of those ones where you've got two things that are pretty far away. So I'm pretty sure that this is a salt. Yeah, it's a salt. Yeah. So we've got, this is not te uh, technically correct. These things aren't bound together in into molecules. Um, but you can think about it still as the same sort of thing where you've got one of these for every two of these, they're just not packaged together. So I was technically incorrect earlier when I wrote that it was a molecule. So yeah, next bit. All right, let's go through two more practice problems. Um, not really gonna teach anything else new, just gonna go over the, how this, this works again. So we've got some water here it looks like we can write that as something like this. And we're going to have four of those. And it looks like we have some N2. I believe that's 
they are triple bonded, but we're not really focusing on that right now. We're just focusing on the number of atoms. Yeah, there's only two of them. That's what I thought. And then we've got oxygen as well right here. So you can see that we have our um, oxygen atoms. We have some nitrogen atoms. We have some oxygen there as well. Already labeled our oxygen. And then we also have some hydrogen atoms. And we can say that there's four molecules of the H2O. And yes, I'm going to write it out each time just to re-emphasize what these things are. So we've got four molecules, H2O. We've got two uh, molecules, the N2. And we've got um, one molecule of O2. And these are all compounds. Or actually, no, th these are. this is a compound. And these are not compounds. So I'm just going to copy paste that because <laughs> I'm lazy, right? So we've got this is not a compound, nor is that. And then these are all substances and no ions, I believe. And this is a substance and no ions yep there's absolutely no ions present here in this problem uh let's go ahead and get yep no ions right there <laughs> it's faster than me writing it out isn't it no ions present okay um our atoms molecules compounds yep substances all of that is labeled okay so if we have um h2o like we're only we only have one of those it looks like we also only have one of these and we've got two of the nitrogens and one oxygen oh it's actually from that part on it's it's the same problem so i'm gonna have you try and actually solve this problem and i'll make the some of the questions for the interactive uh, video tell you the answer that you'd get for them. Okay. All right, I'm going to end this here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about. And remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wyzant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon. And you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.